Okay, let's hope this is our last video here. It's been a, a lot, but it's also an entire unit test review packet. So 31 to kick us off. Um, we're looking again at finding two solutions to the question cosine theta equals negative a half. So it's asking what two points on the unit circle or what are two points that uh, we go to an angle and we find that its cosine ratio is negative one half. Well, looking at that, cosine is negative in, well, cosine goes with x and x is negative in quadrants two and three. So our answer should be somewhere in quadrants two and three where the x term is negative a half. So when we look at that, we see right there, bing, and straight down from that, bing. There you go. I don't need to show that. So um, our answers are going to be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And again, all it is is using the idea that cosine goes with x, and our x coordinate on the unit circle has been given right here. Um, so 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, those are my answers. So we can check that. Cosine 2 pi over 3. Uh, let's see if we don't need that. Cosine 2 second pi over 3. Bing, negative a half. Cosine 4 pi. Right, over three, cha-ching, look at that, negative a half. So we're good, we're golden, that's 31. 32, hey look, we already did 32. It was the introductory one. Um, but again, we're looking for sine. Sine is the y value, whereas our y coordinate equal to a half, well, those are those smaller angles because we had to go a much further distance out and then just a little bit up. Well, that was 32. 33, tangent is undefined. Okay, well, what does that mean? What in the heck is that? Well, let me erase that. What it's saying is tangent, tangent is going to be, again, sine divided by cosine. So we're trying to figure out when we're dividing by zero, right? Like that's how you get an undefined answer, dividing by zero. So, and then it really doesn't matter what's on top because anything divided by zero doesn't exist. So where is our cosine equal to zero? Well, that's pretty easy. Cosine, again, is our x term. That's right there. That's pi over 2. So one answer is pi over 2. Where's the other one where x is zero? Well, that's straight down the line at 0 comma negative 1, so that's 3 pi over 2. And again, let's just check those tangent theta. Clear tangent of second pi over 2. Eh, domain error. Doesn't work. Okay, yep, that's what we wanted. Tangent of 3 second pi over 2. And eh, again, domain error. Just proving that things don't work. So, there you have it. Answer, moving on, cotangent negative one. Let's look and see, um, let's see what that looks like on the unit circle. Here we go. Um, well, I guess if we wanna go back, if cotangent is equal to negative one, uh, another way of looking at that is finding where is tan equal to the inverse of that. So kind of remember going back to those those top problems up here. When we start looking at like say 22, we have a two-step process. We solve for the ratio, um, but using the inverse of the trig function given. So we, we know that secant is the inverse of cosine. So step one, we solve cosine of that angle five pi over three. Once we get the ratio, then we take the ratio and we flip it and find the inverse. So really, I'm bringing that up because 34 is going to be very similar. We can look and find where um, the inverse of cotangent, so we're back to tangent, where is the inverse of that equal to the inverse of this? Well, tangent 
of theta is got to equal to what? Well, what is the inverse of negative 1? Well, you flip the fraction, and you know, negative 1 as a whole number is equal to negative 1 over 1. So if we flip that, that just becomes 1 over negative. Whoa, not a square root. <laughs> Let's not add that. Uh, 1 over negative 1. Doesn't matter. We still have negative 1. So really, we're finding tangent equal to negative 1. So where does that happen? That happens when theta is equal to what? Well, the only time you can get a number one for a ratio is when you have your uh, one fraction divided by your other fraction to be the same fraction. So for example, pi over four is root two over two divided by root two over two. When you do that, your trig ratio for tangent becomes one. So just being careful though, be careful, this is asking for negative 1. When we do that, we need one of our two, our x or our y, to be a negative value. So if we took negative root 2 over 2 divided by positive root 2 over 2, that gets us negative 1. So, uh, in fact, there is one of the answers, 3 pi over 4. The other one is going to be down here in the fourth quadrant because... Here in the third quadrant, negative x, negative y, your tangent's positive again. Here we have positive x, negative y, so that's going to work out a lot better. So 7 pi over 4. And there are your answers. Again, um, how do I... This one here, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if we took tangent equal to negative 1, we found 3 pi over 4, cotangent is going to be simply taking the value of tangent of 3 pi over 4, which is negative 1, and you flip it. Um, so maybe not the best example. Let's look at 35. I think 35 is going to explain it a lot better. So cosecant equal to negative 2. So really I'm asking for what is the angle whose sine of theta is equal to the inverse of that. Remember, the inverse of negative 2 is equal to negative one half, right? When we flip that. So we're finding sine theta of negative one half. Well, that is a little bit easier to find on our unit circle because if we filled it out correctly, we're looking for negative one half. Sine is negative. Well, sine is the y term. Y is negative in quadrants three, three and four. Okay, so we're looking for the y term negative one-half. Well, here it is here. If we go straight across, there it is again. So we have 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 as our answers. And again, it's one of those, once you find the angles, um, see, if I, if I said, what is, um, I don't know, if I were to flip this problem around and say, what is sine of 7 pi over 6? Um, nope, not even sine. I want cosecant of 7 pi over 6. Well, remember, from up above here, ah, too far, I said, solve for the trig inverse, get an answer, and then flip your fraction. So let's do that here. We can check our work, right? We can look and say, ah, cosecant of 7 pi over 6 is like finding sine of pi over 7 pi over 6. So if we find sine of 7 pi over 6, there's 7 pi over 6. The sine is the y term. That's negative 1 half. So we say, okay, well, that would be negative 1 half. Now, if we're looking for the cosecant of 7 pi over 6, we take and we flip that fraction and we get negative 2. So that does all work frontwards and backwards. Let's get this in. You guys, we have one more secant undefined. Hmm. Okay, well, it's a little bit tricky, but not too bad. If secant is being found for undefined, undefined again is going to be some number over zero. So um, 
So you can have some ratio where it's a number over zero. So if we're trying to find the secant of this ratio, we're also, in effect, looking for the cosine of some angle whose ratio um, is flips zero over some number. So really, I'm looking for secant undefined is like saying, find me an angle whose cosine is zero. Cosine is zero at pi over two, because cosine goes with our x, and it's also zero at three pi over two. So our answers are pi over two and three pi over two. Because again, what we can do, how I would find secant of an angle in general, I would take the cosine of the angle and then flip it. So I'm going to take cosine of pi over two. Let's check. Okay, cosine of pi over two. Yep, that's zero. Now I say one divided by the answer to get my secant answer. Ah, divided by zero. Can't do that. Right? There. Box it in, we know we're good. So, you guys, that's it. Not even 12 minutes on this one, but we've pushed through. Um, if you have any more questions, email me, come to class, let me know you have questions. But um, hopefully this broke it up enough so that as you found certain problems were giving you trouble, um, you can just watch a, a shorter video than some really long one. So there you go. Uh, good luck. I'll uh, see you guys in class.